In the last lecture, we learned how to send a POST request from our React application. Now, in this lecture, we are going to learn how to send a GET request and fetch data from the database and display it in our React application. Here, we have our Firebase database. And in this database, currently we have one collection, this users collection. And inside this users collection, we have three user documents. Okay, so this is the first document. This is the second document. And this is the third document. So what we want is, from our React application, we want to send a GET request to this database. And from this users collection, we want to fetch all these three users. And we want to display it in our React application. Basically, we want to display it in this table. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go to VS Code. And here I'm in the app component. And in the last lecture, we created this function on create user. And from within this function, we are sending a POST request to the server. Now let's go ahead and let's create a new function. Let's call this function fetch user or fetch users. And from within this function, we are going to send a GET request to the server. But before that, let's go ahead and let's create an array which is going to store all the users which we are going to fetch from the database. So for that, I'm going to use use state. Let's create a variable. Let's call it users. And this users is going to be an array. And then let's create the state updating function and let's call it set users. And to this, I'm going to assign use state. Okay, so here we are creating a new state called users. And initially, to this user state, I'm going to assign an empty array. So as I mentioned, this users array is going to store all the users which we are going to fetch from the database. Next, inside this function, this fetch user function which we have just created, from within this function, let's send a get request. And to send a GET request, again, I'm going to use this fetch API. So in the last lecture also, we used this fetch API. And to this fetch API, the first argument which we need to pass is the URL, the endpoint. So I'm going to copy this endpoint because it is this endpoint where all the users are stored. So inside this users.json, this collection, we are storing all our users. So from this URL, from this endpoint, we want to get all the users. Let's copy this URL and let's pass it to this fetch API. And then to this fetch method, we can also pass a second optional argument, which is going to be an object. And inside this object, we can set some properties, for example, method. So here we want to send a get request. So the method will be get. Then since we are sending a get request, in case of a get request, we are going to fetch some data from the server. Here, we are not going to send any data with the request. So here, we don't need to specify this body because in case of a GET request, the body is going to be empty. And if you want, you can also set some headers using this headers property. And to that, you can assign an object. And inside this object, you can set some headers. But when we use fetch API, by default, it sends the GET request. So even if I don't specify the second argument here for this fetch API, it is going to send a get request because by default, the fetch API sends a get request. If we want to send a post request, put request or delete request, in that case, we will have to specify the second argument because in that case, we will have to explicitly mention the method like we are doing here in case of post request. But if we want to make a get request using the fetch API, we don't have to explicitly specify the method. Now we know that this fetch API is going to return a promise. So on that promise, I'm going to call this then method. And to this then method, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function is going to receive the response. So here, let's specify a parameter. Let's call it response. You can name it anything, but in this parameter, you're going to receive the response which this fetch API will return when the promise will be resolved. So when we have the response, from that response, we want to extract the body. So in the response body, we will receive all the users object from this database. Okay, so we are going to receive these three user objects and we will receive these three objects in the response body. So 
once we have the response from that response we want to extract the body for that on this response we can call json method so this json method is going to give us the body of the response and we want to return that so basically this json method is also going to return a promise it is going to return us the body of the response as a promise and we are returning that promise from this then method so what i can also do is again i can chain another then method okay and again to this then method we can pass a callback function and this callback function will receive the data which this promise has returned now what is this promise returning it is returning us the user's object so here in this callback function we are going to receive that data so let's call it data and just to see how that data looks let's simply go ahead and log that data all right now when do we want to call this fetch users function well if i go to the web page in our react application here i have this get users button so when i click on this get users button i want to send a get request to the server and i want to fetch all the users from the database so on this button i'm going to add on click event listener so here we have this get users button on this let's listen to click event by using this on click listener and to that let's assign this fetch users function let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me open developer console let's clear everything here and let's click on this get users button so you will notice that here we have received an object if i expand this object inside this object we have key value pairs so this is the key and the value for this key is an object if i expand this you will see that that object has these properties so basically we are receiving these three users inside an object so inside that object we have key value pairs so this string value this id value which you see here that is the key and for that this object is its value that's what you will see here so what we want is we want to get these objects from within this outer object and we want to store it in an array let's go back to vs code and let's write the logic for that so currently we are simply logging the data but instead of logging that data we want to push it to this users array which we have just created okay and in order to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use for in loop let's create a variable here let's call it key in and then inside this data we are receiving an object so let's say data now this data here is an object and here using this for in loop we are looping over that object so for each iteration inside this key we are going to receive this string value okay so for the first iteration the key will have this value for the second iteration the key will have this value and for the third iteration the key will have this value let's go back to vs code so before we loop over this data let's also create an array let's call it maybe user data and to this let's assign an empty array now inside this foreign loop i'm going to push a new object inside this user data array so for that let's say user data dot push okay and we want to push a new object for that i'm going to use a set of curly braces and here i can say data of key okay so this data of key it is going to return us this object okay so for the first iteration the key is this value so the data of key is going to return us this object for the second iteration data of key is going to return us this object and for the third iteration data of key is going to return us this object okay and on that object i am going to use a spread operator for the spread operator we can use three dots like this in that case each property of this object so for example for the first iteration when we will receive this object since we have used a spread operator each property of this object will be created as an individual property within these curly braces okay so using these curly braces 
we are creating an object and inside that object we want to have all the properties which we have inside this object okay so for that we are using spread operator in the same way for the second iteration we want to spread this object so we want to have all the properties of this object as a property inside this new object and along with those properties I also want to have an ID property and I want to assign this ID property with this key value so this ID here will be assigned with these string values now why do we need that we need it while updating or deleting the user and that's why I also want to store this value this string value inside this object okay and then we are pushing that object inside this user data so now instead of logging this data let's go ahead and let's log user data and let's see how it looks let's go to the web page let me refresh the page let's clear the console and let's click on this get users button so you will see that now this users data contains an array and the elements of this array are objects the user objects and each object here has the city country date of birth email first name id last name password property and you see the value of this id property it is the same string value which uniquely identifies that user so basically these string values okay finally what we want is we want to update this users array with this user data array for that we can use this set user state updating function let's use it here and to this let's pass this user data okay now let's comment this console.log statement so in this way we are sending a get request to the server and we are receiving some response and with that response we are receiving the users data now we want to display that users data in this table for that here I have this user details component inside this component I have written some HTML so I want to display the full name email date of birth gender and let's say I also want to display the country and city so let me add those headers as well in this table then here let's also add two more TD elements for country and city for now let's hard code that value to maybe USA and New York all right now what we want is we want to repeat this tr element for each user and there we want to display the user details for that first we need to pass this users array to this user details component and for that we can use props so on this user details i'm going to create a new attribute let's call it users and to that let's assign this user state then on the user details component here we are going to receive a props and on that props we will have a users property so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this curly braces and inside that i will say props dot users dot and i'm going to use this map method on this users array because here i want to loop over this users array and for each iteration I want to transform the elements of this users array so to this map method we need to pass a callback function and this map function is going to receive the user object for each iteration so let's specify that parameter let's simply call it user and from within this function I'm going to return this TR element so I will cut it from here and I will specify it inside this body of this map function and let's also use the return statement now let's go ahead and let's replace these hard-coded values with the value from the user object so for that we can use a set of curly braces and here I want to use the first name property and I want to append a space and then the last name property in the same way here I want to use the email property of the user object then here I want to use date of birth property so DOB if I go to the web page you can see that here we also have this DOB property then here I want to use the gender property 
here I want to use the country property and here I want to use the city property and I need to access all these properties on this user object so I need to use user dot first name user dot last name user dot email user dot date of birth user dot gender user dot country and user dot city and with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me close the developer console here and let's click on this get users button and you will notice that all those users are being displayed here now for the gender we are not seeing any values because in the last lecture in this user form component we did not created any reference variable for the gender field so let's go ahead and let's do that here let's say gender ref and to this let's assign use ref then on the gender field here we have the gender field on this gender field on this select element let's add this ref attribute and to that let's assign gender ref then when we are creating this user object that time we also want to set the gender property so here let's say gender ref dot current dot value all right now let's go ahead and let's create a new user by clicking on this add user button let's say name is mike last name something s email mike s at gmail.com some password let's say he's from germany berlin let's select a date of birth and his mail and now let's click on this create user button let's go to our database and you will notice that one new user has been created mike s okay and here the gender is also set let's go back to our application let's close this form and let's click on this get users button again so now it should show four users okay so this is how we can send a get request from our react application now here we are using this fetch api to send the get request but we can also use the exios library to send the get request let's see how to do that so for that first i'm going to comment this code and i'm going to paste the same code here the only thing which we need to change here is instead of using fetch we need to use exios dot get because here we want to send a get request then as we learned in our last lecture when we use exios library there we cannot use this json method so here we need to use data and rest other things are going to be same with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's refresh the page here and now let's click on this get users button so it should show us all the four users now let's go ahead and let's add one more user let's say first name is sara last name is king email address saraking at gmail.com let's set some password confirm password she is from usa new york let's select a date of birth so for that i'm going to select a year first so let's say sara was born in 1999 july 23 okay and she's a female let's click on this create user button let's check if that user has been created so you can see that user sara has been created let's close this form and let's click on this get user button again and now it should show five records so in this lecture we learned how to send a get request and fetch data from the database from our react application and how to display it in the web page if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day